Hey guys, today I'm just going to do a real quick one on a gun that at first glance looks to be about one of the most common guns you'll, you'll see in the United States. It looks just like any Beretta 92FS or M9, but on closer inspection you'll see that there are a few differences because this is an original Beretta 92 from the 1970s. Um, just pulled it out to talk about a little bit because a lot of people aren't aware um, of some of the unique features that these guns originally had when they were first produced back in the 70s. The, uh, I'm not going to go into all the details because obviously being one of the most popular handguns in the world you can find pretty much anything you want to find about these online. The original 92s are a little bit tough to find information about though just because using search terms like Bread 92 you end up with tons of 92FS stuff and um, these are a little bit more on the rare side. There are about 5,000 of them produced um, from the years 1975 to 1977 from what I can tell. Uh, this one happens to be one of the earlier ones because it has what's called a step slide which I find pretty attractive. That's one of the ones I searched out for it actually. Um, it has this raised portion on the slide here. And from what I've heard, I think the first thousand or so had that feature. And I just think it has a nice look to it. It gives it sort of a, um, another dimension to the shape of it. Uh, it just looks kind of nice. But all of the original 92s had a few different features that set, the, set them apart from later variations of the gun, like the 92FS and the, the M9, the SB. You know, there's a, a billion different 92 versions out there. But um, the main ones are going to be frame-mounted safety here and the uh, location of the magazine release, which is down here. Um, frame-mounted safety, you know, later on they moved up to the slide, which I'm not a big fan of that feature, so it's another reason why this original gun is attractive to me. It has it down here, which allows you to carry it cocked and locked, which is kind of an interesting feature, just like a 1911. Um, and then the magazine release is kind of unique, too. I don't know if I've seen any other guns with the with the button there. It's it functions similar similarly to the American style up here at being the button, but you know a lot of these older European guns had a, a heel release right there, but this uh, location is a little bit unique, I think. So you push that, comes out. Um, I have some custom made wood grips put on here. They originally came with black plastic grips, which, in my opinion, are a bit ugly. So wanted to swap those out. Um, you'll notice also the shape of the trigger guard is different. It doesn't have the uh, sort of the scallops grip serrations or anything like that like the, the later models tend to have. Um, front The sights, both of them are fixed which is kind of a pain just because uh, you can see the rear there, let me try to get the focus on the front because <clears throat> they're, it's accurate, the gun's accurate and the sights are, are set up fine from the factory but this front sight is pretty small and dark and as you'll see, as you can see I have a uh, an extended Tornado Technologies threaded barrel put on there um, which I got from them, and I use that to, to mount my AAC Tyrant 9mm silencer. It's a great silencer host. It's just that uh, this older one, without having dotted sights, and they're, you know, they're fixed, and the front one's real small, it's kind of hard to see against the black of the can, so um, it's a bit tough to aim. I do appreciate having raised sights, or you know, at least some dotted sights or something, so you can see a little better. But um, So yeah, those are some of the main features. It's an all-metal gun. It's another one. Everything in it, the guide rod, all the trigger parts, they're all metal, no plastic or anything. Uh, it's a blued finish, which is another thing I like. Um, let me see the other side. Pretty much it's just a, you know your typical 92FS except for some of these other features that uh, these guns originally had. And if you're thinking it looks a lot like the Taurus PT92, especially because of the safety, that's because the Taurus, they, uh, they, built, they modeled their gun after this original 92. So, although I think they moved the magazine release up to here. Um, so, you know, I'll do, I'll share my comments, sort of my review on the gun a little bit. Every one of you guys has probably at least handled one of these, maybe shot one. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a great shooter, feels great in the hand. Um, a little on the large side, but it fits me pretty well. My main gripe with it really is the trigger. The double action pull is a bit heavy and long. It is a service gun, though, so I mean, I guess that's understandable. But my real gripe is with the single action. I just don't like all this take up, and I'm just maybe a little bit too picky, but, um, you know, that much take up, that much travel, almost all the way back to the back of the to the frame of the gun before it goes off. And once you get there, trigger pull's not bad, you know, it's pretty crisp and not too heavy, but uh, I just prefer single action of my guns to be, you know, it's like brakes right there. But overall, you know, it's a, it's a Brad 92 basically, except for these some of these original features that are a little bit unique and uh, you know, I'm into weird, rare, unique stuff, so even with my 92 I had to do something a little bit unusual with it and get one of these original ones. Like I said, 5,000 of these made. They're not super easy to find, especially searching for them is tough because 92 just turns up every kind of Beretta 92. So they're not too expensive though when you do find them. Most of these ended up in police service. So um, so yeah, it's a great gun. Uh, it's the original Beretta 92. Some interesting features. Thanks for watching.